Hi, I'm Maura Plouffe. Today I'm sitting down with John Torpy, President and General Manager of EpiRock USA. Hi, John. Hi, hey, Maura. Thank you for taking time today out of your busy schedule to sit with me. My pleasure. I'd like to dig into how EpiRock, as a global company, how is it represented in the USA? So I think to start with EpiRock, uh, the structure overall is we have product companies that are our factories and we have customer centers that are the way that we take these products to market. So EpiRock USA is a customer center and so we take all of the products that EpiRock builds globally, bring them into the US and that's how we take it to market. Mm -hmm. And EpiRock's a little bit unique in that we actually have the factories but we also own these customer mm -hmm. centers all over the world. So we have this footprint that, that goes not only in the manufacturing side, but all the way and connects to the customer, which is pretty interesting and pretty unique in terms of how the company operates and our structure. So EpiRock USA is one of the largest customer centers within EpiRock. Uh, we have 15 locations around the US with our uh, US headquarters here in Broomfield, Colorado. Our business is in construction and mining. We, we operate in both of those segments. And we also sell not only direct, or sell and service direct, but we also sell and service through dealers. With this structure, how do you make EpiRock USA special? So I think, you know, the, the, the way to make special, I think, in any company mm -hmm. starts with the culture. So we focus a lot on the culture within the company, and we want it to be a company that employees feel like they can come to, they can build a career, but I think really important that they, they feel like they can almost do anything. And I think that's one thing that's special about EpiRock globally is that, you know, this company, you really can be anything you want to be. Every job that comes open in the company, we post globally. And if you feel like you want to try a different type of career path, you want to try seeing what it's like to live in Indonesia, you can do that in EpiRock. And so in EpiRock USA, in order to, to bring our part to that, it really starts with the culture that we try to build in EpiRock USA. And that's a culture that employees not only realize and feel that they can grow within the company, but they also feel like they're part of teams that are collaborative. Uh, we really believe in this idea of empowerment and freedom with accountability and letting people innovate. And we have this saying that the, the person closest to the problem or the opportunity is the best one to solve it. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to come with those ideas and do that. And I think when you do that, plus some other things that we work on, you build a really strong cultural foundation. And then after that, you can work on different initiatives, different strategies that just help it to be even more successful. So it sounds like within this setup, you're able to get a lot of things done. How does it all come together? Like, yeah. how do you make sure things are getting done with yeah. all these remote locations? Yeah, yeah. so I think, um, you know, anything, any, any of these, uh, it starts with great people. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot that we've done actually in our company to try to attract and keep great people. EpiRock also has this, what I think is a really cool leadership model and, and it's, I think the beauty is a little bit in the simplicity of it, because mm -hmm. these things do get complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces to it. And so I think the beauty is the simplicity. And the leadership model is um, mission, vision, strategy, structure, people. And if you follow that, you can actually take things that are fairly complex and break them into tangible ways of working that, that make sense. Mm -hmm. And and the key there is to focus on the priorities and do the things at the right time mm -hmm. that, that need to happen. And so the idea being that there's a mission, we need you to accomplish this. That could be grow by 10% to accomplish this customer satisfaction, whatever it is. Um, so, so that mission comes down to me or to another individual. And then I'm empowered with that through this leadership model to say, okay, what's my vision to get there? And I think the visioning side of it's really powerful. Sometimes uh, people struggle with the visioning side, but if you can figure out how to tap into it, the visioning side's really powerful because you can take this longer term view, maybe a five year view and beyond and say, when, when this is done really great, how do I, how do I think it's gonna look? And, and it doesn't have to be, you know, the, right? It's just a vision that you at least want out there to start to calibrate where you wanna go with it. So that's mission and vision, and then we have strategy. And so for, for me, getting things done really boils down to, do you have a good strategy? And, and I think that's really key is, is to put the time into, and, and good strategies aren't just nice PowerPoint slides. They are 
things that make sense that are going to help us move the needle um, in, in the areas that we've decided are important. And a really core piece of strategy is how do I make these complex things simple so that I can help the organization to execute and more importantly the people to thrive within that execution. Mm -hmm. So we have the strategy and then structure is, okay, what type of structure, what type of organizations, what type of teams does it take to accomplish this? And then people, so it comes back around, great people are what are gonna make everything else successful within it. And so if we follow that, uh, and again, it's, it's a simple model, but if my experience is if you follow that, you can actually have a pretty good chance of succeeding with taking a complex, moving pieces, um, different, uh, even sometimes competing initiatives, and put them together into something that makes sense to help you accomplish the goals within the company. And I feel as an employee, we are reminded of the strategy and the mission and the vision within my own department. Mm -hmm. So I bet if we took a survey and I went around the office, people would feel the same. It needs to be transparent. You know, the, for employees to be empowered, it's really important that they understand how do I fit into the initiatives that help to deliver mm -hmm results to the company. And if they can show up and, and understand, hey, this is the role I play, and it impacts everything else within that, that that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. and, and then people show up with uh, that, that sense of, of belonging and contribution that really helps to make a difference in, in getting things done. So you have to talk about it. You have to, I'd say even beyond that, you have to say, hey, do you have any questions mm -hmm. about our vision or strategy? Because if you do, please ask. We'd rather you talk about it, ask the questions, get clarification so that you understand how you can do your part to help mm -hmm. deliver to it. Sure, and my perspective again is EpiRock does have um, like the stakeholder group mm -hmm. where you know you don't always have to go to your manager or you, you can reach out to the 30 people in that group right. and get you know their feedback or right. ask a question, so. You know, we created this stakeholder group because one of the things that happens as you become more executive, there's a risk that you get caught up in, I'd, I'd say some administrative, internally facing mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a risk as you become, I think, more executive, you, you can start to lose touch with your customer base, you can start to lose touch with your employees. And, and so rather than pretending like that's not a reality, we said, yeah, this is, this is real. Uh, how do we make sure that doesn't happen? And so one is how we work uh, as a management team and as executives in the company to try to keep that connection. Uh, but the stakeholder group is, is a really nice, diverse group of 25 people from around the company that uh, we actually invite to, to question the strategy, mm -hmm. to challenge, to tell us, hey, what are you hearing in the workforce? Are you hearing rumors? Are you hearing mm -hmm. positive feedback? Uh, share that with us and help us to keep that connection because it's hard to be everywhere. It's hard to understand what's going on everywhere. And that stakeholder group really helps to, to bring that feedback and likewise helps to carry clarification and, and messages throughout the organization as well that as a management team of 10 people, we wouldn't be able to do. And so that's a really, really key to helping to make the strategy succeed, but also ensuring that employees feel like they have that connection and that they're a part of it mm -hmm. as well. Oh, good. Seems to be working. I hope so. <laughs> John, with EpiRock being a global company, how do you ensure that the strategy aligns globally? So we, uh, our CEO and her team, our, her executive team, they set a long-term strategy as, as well as some short-term strategic initiatives. Mm -hmm. and, and those are global. That's what EpiRock needs to accomplish as a company. Because we are a decentralized organization, mm -hmm. They, they give us the, the what in terms of what we need to accomplish and, and really set clear the boundaries that that strategy needs to work within. Mm -hmm. The really cool thing about EpiRock is then we get a lot of flexibility in terms of how are we gonna deliver and support that strategy. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we keep that alignment. The, there can be uh, danger if you start having rogue strategies and rogue initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, that, that really isn't good. So we always wanna keep that alignment but in terms of how we develop our strategy now in EpiRock USA, as long as it aligns, we actually have a lot of flexibility for how we're gonna do that and deliver our part mm -hmm. within that. And there again, using this leadership model, mission, vision, strategy, mm -hmm. structure, people, we, we make sure that we follow the global strategy, the direction that, that our CEO has set, that EpiRock has set, but 
our market and our customers are different than markets and customers in other parts of the world. And so our job is to connect that global strategy to our market and customers in the US. And, and our strategy and, and our initiatives are really key to making sure that that, that connection mm -hmm. happens. And so that's why we do put a lot of focus on our strategy, following our strategy, and making sure that it delivers to the results, but also continues to align with the global strategy. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's working and you have really good people. I think so, yeah. So far it, it, it seems to be working. And we have awesome people. <laughs> yes. Um, EpiRock has very ambitious sustainability goals, John. Yeah. How do you make sure we're aligning with those sustainability goals and what initiatives are we taking here in the USA? So I think when you think of sustainability, there's there's different words that come to people's mm -hmm. mind. And so within EpiRock, we have some ambitious 2030 sustainability initiatives. They tie to carbon footprint. Uh, they tie to safety. Uh, they tie to balanced workforce, which includes diversity. And they tie to developing people. So I think, first of all, the way that EpiRock looks at sustainability, I, I personally really like it because I think it's a holistic approach. It's it's not just uh, you know a decarbonization sustainability strategy. It, it is holistic in that it is carbon footprint, it is safety, it is about people, it is about workforce balance. And, and so that, that actually makes it, you know, I don't wanna say easy, but I'd say easier to say, okay, what can we do in EpiRock USA to help be a part of that? And uh, there's a lot that we're doing. So uh, I think in terms of safety, this is, this is always the top priority. And uh, the most important thing there is to have safety really be embedded in your culture. Make sure that employees understand that, you know, we're not gonna compromise anything that, that uh, is gonna impact safety. We, we're, not gonna, we're not going to, you know, have to rush through work if it compromises safety. And so doing that, and then we have some really good initiatives that, that tie to that, and some of them uh, really cool local initiatives that we've developed, as well as global initiatives uh, that have come into EpiRock USA, like Safe Start and things like that. And so we put those together with safety always being one of the top priorities. We've done a lot of work on developing great people and great leaders. We've invested a lot in uh, what we do from, from a leadership development perspective. And I, and I think this isn't manager development, this is leadership development. This is how people impact others and lead others to help us deliver great results. Uh, so we have a, like a nine month leadership development program that we put people through to help them develop uh, skills, to help them become more self-aware, to, to be great leaders. So that supports that. Uh, we work hard on balanced workforce, so I think uh, for us, balanced workforce starts again with culture. If you have a culture that people can identify with and say, you know, um, I'd like to be a part of this company because their culture seems to align with my values and what I like, you have a lot better chance of having a balanced workforce because you will get a more diverse group of people mm -hmm. applying for the jobs and you have a better chance of getting not just great people but also a, a more diverse workforce. And so there's a lot of initiatives that we've done locally as well to, to help support that. So we're doing our part, I think, in all of those areas, uh, even on the idea of uh, carbon neutral, we're looking at initiatives there that, mm -hmm. that we can help feed that. There's a lot that goes into product development and how do we bring those latest products to market, you know, battery powered vehicles and things like that that also help with, with carbon footprint. So all of that fits in to the work that we do at EpiRock USA to support those bigger sustainability targets that EpiRock has uh, for the 2030 targets. Sure, and I'm sure in the field we're getting questions all the time, what, what is EpiRock doing? Mm -hmm. That puts a lot of emphasis on the carbon. Yeah, footprint. you know, I think our, our customers, you know, especially, so our customers, safety has been there for, mm -hmm. for a long time. And so there's always this strive to be safer. and. And I think that's always going to be there. It's it's uh, it's one of those things that until we're at zero harm, zero fatalities, uh, we will always be working on that. And our and our customers uh, fully align with that, which is great. We've seen our customers really now this idea of decarbonization, mm -hmm. uh, especially mining customers. What can they do uh, to help impact that? So there again, I think EpiRock starts to be an even more important partner. I think EpiRock's doing. You know, we were the the 
one of the, the first companies in our space to actually commit to science-based targets for carbon reduction, uh, that, that makes an impact. Now we can partner with customers to actually tell them, hey, this is the value that we can bring to your initiatives mm -hmm. for decarbonization. Um, yeah, so so for sure, when, when it aligns with what your customers are doing, it makes it a lot easier as well to, to bring it and connect it to the market. Sure. John, it seems like it always goes back to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, people within EpiRock have a long, lot of longevity within EpiRock. I'm 23 years, you're 23 years. We have somebody retiring 45 years. To me, that's unheard of yeah. in other companies. It's like five years and they're they're out. How do you feel um, EpiRock is able re to retain these people for a lifetime of work? What is your perspective on you know, that? So, so yeah, we're kind of unique, right? Yeah. When when I when I tell people I started with this company out of college and I've been here for 23 years, I think part of it is that if if you have a, a great place to work, uh, if people like to come to work and they and they enjoy being with the people that they have to work with. If they feel that that there's a fulfillment that they get out of their day-to-day -day work, if they know that uh, if they want to try something different, they can try something different. I think when you put all of that together, that's that's really everything that goes into to that recipe for mm -hmm. why people do stay here. Uh, you know, for me, that's I've been able to do things in this company that that really, when I graduated from college, I never imagined I could do. And I think if, if that's possible for, for everybody, that they're going to stay, right? They're going to stay in the company and they're going to say, I, I can explore so many different things. Or if I want to, I can just kind of do my same job that I really love and I can do it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. that, that's okay as well. Um, but I think the way the company looks at things, the way it empowers individuals, the way, uh, the way that we grow people, as you build a collective group of individuals like that, it's just easier to go to work and, and enjoy what you do. And mm -hmm. John, you have 23 years with the company. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey? Yeah, sure. So yeah, 23 years, and I came into the company right out of college. So I think that's maybe a little unique nowadays mm -hmm. that, that I started with a company. Uh, the company changed names three times. So I started with a company called Ingersoll Rand. Mm -hmm which was acquired by Atlas Copco. And then at Atlas Copco, we decided to create this new company called EpiRock. And so same company, three different names. But I, I came out of college, I'm a mining engineer, mm -hmm. and I kind of had a choice of, do I go work in the mining industry? And, and I grew up in the mining industry. I grew up in South America, mountaintop on Peru. My mm -hmm. dad was in mining. And so I, I really grew up in that industry, understood that industry. And I had to make a decision, do I go, do I go into mining and work at the mines, or I had an opportunity to actually go work for a manufacturer of mining equipment, which was Ingersoll Rand. And I decided to do that. And, and one of the reasons I made that decision, I still remember the, the person that recruited me said, you know, who, who also graduated from the same school I did, and, and he had come into the company a similar way. He said, look, he said, if your ambition is to be in the same mine every day and being a part of building that great operation, you will hate working for Ingersoll Rand. So, but he said, if your ambition is to see the world, and have a bit more adventure, then you will love working for Ingersoll Rand. And so, which I think is really key because not everybody wants adventure and not everybody wants to stand still. I, I wanted sure. adventure. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go for adventure. And I've gotten that, I can tell you. I mean, I've traveled the world uh, with the company, but it started off, I started as an applications engineer where I worked with customers basically helping to explain how our products work in their business. Uh, I moved into product management, which was owning a product portfolio, setting a product strategy. Uh, I did a stint as a marketing manager, uh, even though I really had never taken a marketing class, mm -hmm. uh, even as a mining engineer, didn't have a marketing experience, but got a lot of marketing experience. Um, and then had the opportunity actually to run a small part of the business as a business line manager. Uh, that led into, you know, this was one of these moments where I, I think I had great mentors and coaches who saw maybe more potential in, in me than even I saw because I had the opportunity to go from a business line manager into a vice president mm -hmm. of marketing role, which was kind of that step it, to be an executive, which, you know, again, good mentors and coaches saw that potential and, and helped me get there. I don't know if I would have done that if I didn't have great mentors and coaches. So I did that. Seven years, global uh, VP marketing role, uh, fantastic. Along the way, we went from being 
just a manufacturer of equipment and we decided that we should make this big equipment robotic. Mm -hmm. So again, I'd never taken, so I hadn't taken marketing classes mm -hmm. and I got into marketing and I'd never taken robotics, but I got into robotics and got to be part of a robotics program that was incredible. We created a new business model and, and all of that as part of, as part of the company. So that was incredible. And then seven years of that, three years ago, I had the chance to run an entire business at Rock USA. And so that, that's kind of the progression, and it's it's certainly not something that I had mapped out, mm -hmm. but I think it goes back to, you know, in this company, you, you can do almost anything you want, uh, but I'll also say great mentors, great coaches uh, helped me get there, because I don't know that I would have been confident enough to take that kind of path without great mentors and coaches who said, hey, don't be afraid to try this, go ahead, you know, experiment, try new things, and don't be afraid, since you don't have marketing or you don't have robotics, you're not limited in what you can do, you know, lean into it and give it a try. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great, 23 years has gone really fast, but I can say it's actually been a lot of fun because of because of how we work as a company. Mm -hmm. Your answer was great, and I was thinking my next question to you would be, what advice would you give a new person applying for a job at Epiroc? But it, it's almost like you answered it there. <laughs> Um, but do you have anything to add to that as far as advice? You know, I think, so I think it's really important to understand that uh, from day one, you're a valuable employee in the company. Mm -hmm. um, you may not have all of the experience yet, but this is the view, when we bring interns into our company, it's really important, for example, that we say, we give them meaningful work. Interns in our company don't get coffee and things like that. From day one, it's meaningful work. And I think for a new employee, it's the same way. Understand that from day one, you have a chance to contribute and be a meaningful part of what we're trying to do. Don't think that you have to kind of sit in the background and wait for an invitation to come and do that. You, from day one, you have that opportunity. And and we're very open. Like, if, if, if somebody new in the company finds me and asks me questions, I never see it as a burden. And I don't think any of the managers in our company. So go and, and reach out and explore and ask questions and learn about the company and learn about opportunities and learn about how you can thrive and ask, you know, ask questions and, and get into it. I think that's, don't feel like you have to kind of sit back and, and wait mm -hmm. to do that. You, you get to do it from day one. And I think that, that if you like that, then you're gonna love when you come and start to work at Epiroc, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, well, from my perspective again, <laughs> I can't imagine working anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. uh, I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite product? <laughs> my favorite Epiroc product. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, uh, not skincare. Yes, not skincare, <laughs> uh, which is, I would say, so I um, I spent most of my life in my career uh, with our surface drills, and I got to be a part of uh, again, something amazing, which was developing an entire new product portfolio. And it's the Pit Viper line of drills. Mm -hmm. I got to be there from the very beginning. I get to be a part of creating uh, the Pit Viper name, the logo, and then the entire portfolio. So for me, it's really easy to answer. Mm -hmm. Pit Vipers, uh, they have a place very near and dear in my heart is the, are the Pit Viper products. Mm -hmm. And everything that we've done with them, the automation, the robotics, all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, for me, that everything that happened with that has been a really special part of my yeah. career. I could say, see folks, no marketing experience, yeah. you developed a logo and everything. Yeah, so, so the story of the mm -hmm. logo's kind of funny, mm -hmm. if you wanna hear it. We, we were standing on a whiteboard, there were three or four of us, mm -hmm. none of us with marketing experience, <laughs> industrial engineer, mining engineer, and, and we said, okay, we, we, had a, we had a code name for the product, mm -hmm. which was DMP or you know, something like that. And we said, this, this, we need to be better than that. Mm -hmm. So we sat at the whiteboard and we said, what should we call this new product portfolio? And with all of our marketing intelligence <laughs> that didn't exist, we said, you know what's really important? It has to look good on a hard hat sticker. Yes. <laughs> and so, yes. And so from it has to look good on a hard yeah. hat sticker, we came up with the Pit Viper name and the Pit Viper logo. That's, that, that's awesome. how it happened. Yeah. So okay. thank you so much for my sitting pleasure. down with me. Yeah, my pleasure.